right, let's see if this works. Let's see if I have a disaster on my hands. I'll just wait for some people to turn up. And we'll get into this and see whether I'm going to have any luck or not. And while we wait, we clean. Clean my very expensive little piece of plastic. Honestly, that feels like... Feels like the lid of cheap um, cheap plastic containers or something. That's a four dollar, very expensive spudger. But I'll see if I can. It's a bit better than credit card plastic. Credit card plastic isn't as flexible. But uh, yeah, let's see if I can find something that I can make a better supply of that. Hopefully we get some people turning up shortly. Middle of the day, not really the normal time. America's asleep, the UK hasn't woken up, nor has South Africa, and Australians are probably down the pub getting drunk on Fosters. Yeah, probably so. Hmm, the stream rate's a bit lower than I expect. Settings, output, why, how dare you? Let's go for seven thousand, six and a half at least. Hmm. That's better. All right, stream rate jumping up. No. YouTube's doing something funny with my stream. Alright. Anyway, I'll get into it. If no one sees this, it'll have to just be a uh, pre recorded video. Uh, but uh, I bought this off eBay. Unusual for me to do lately. But the thing that captured me was that it was a low price $90. Can't really complain about that. Came with the battery. That's no real chop to me anyway. Uh, came with RAM, again, no real chop to me anyway. But the main thing is this is a 2850 board and that's what mattered most. So. Okay, popping out that chat again. Oh, it seems like there are people here. <laughs> chat just uh, wasn't giving me any. Hey, Defcom, good to see you. Can you show how to fix 2011 GPU? I've done that in a few other previous videos, so you might have to check back on those. Anyway, so yeah, we've got a 2950. Now the thing is, this is the i7 2.66 model, and you don't normally get them. That's why this one, I grabbed it. Because usually you get the i5 2.3 or 2.4, and it's a perfectly good machine if you're into that type of gear. But I particularly wanted this one because there is a job that's been languishing here and I've tried to send it back a couple of times and I keep faltering. And I was hoping that I can get a win out of this. By the way, it didn't even come with a bottom plate. That's, this is how it arrived. And I was like, okay. All right, we need to get the tri-wing screws out. Yeah, it's the big uh, thermonuclear light source. Not the greatest fan of it. Oh, this person's tried to take these out using a Phillips head. Because they're no longer tri-wing. They're more <laughs> tried hard with a Phillips head. By the way, I don't know how it's going to go, but we are running... I'm trying to do a 60 frames per second on this one. So I don't know if it's going to work. No, it looks like we're down at 36, 38 frames per second. So I don't think my machine's handling it. Screw management system. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that. But if you're talking about the MacBook one, well, I just have a lot of these 15 bay plastic containers. I get them from Element 14, Farnell, whoever you want to call. They used to be readily available, but Pedro kept stealing them, kept buying out all their stock, so you will have to wait a little while now. 
What's really nice about these is that they are not removable bays, they are just molded like that and the top lid does sit quite flush with it. If you want to truly get it perfectly sealed you could probably stick a piece of clear vinyl or something, a bit of thick vinyl and close it down. But yeah, this that's what I use for almost every job. I think I've got about 30 or 40 of those things now. Hey Sonia, Paul, Chaz. Uh, actually, I suppose I should see if this thing even runs. I guess I kind of wanted to take it out and have a look before I risk doing any damage. Missing one of the overhead lights is the just cam stuffed. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, you mean the brightness level? Maybe I can crank that up. Yeah, I don't have control on that. Okay, let's try it a different way. Brightness. Can knock it up a few EVs. That'd be better. Nihal Victor Yang. How do I keep track of which screw goes where? I've got a bunch up in my head. <laughs> ah, I've got to put this cable in front of me. It's a it's a practice thing. You just get used to doing it a certain way. You come up with your own pattern, and that's really all there is to it. You just got to come up with your own pattern, and each person's going to have their own preferred style. Battery power, uh, battery power. <laughs> Damn it. We've got green light. I'm drawing amps. Oh, it's booting. And I've got a flashing green. Maybe the screen's broken. It's got. We've got a bot. The screen actually comes up. Huh. Oh wow, it actually it boots. Alright, maybe if we're lucky this might just be a C9560 issue. That thing's booting. I'm a little surprised. But it means it could have corrosion on the other side. Hey Jason. Oh, uh, depth on, yeah, when <laughs> I get that when I've got the microscope swinging back and forth. A couple of the cables from the microscope assembly drapes. And even when I've got the screws on a magnetic pad, it will often, yeah, as you just said, sweep them off the pad. And you're like, well, there goes that. Hope for organization. Okay. I'm shocked that this is booting. Jason, nope, none of your stuff's working yet. Trying hard, but if you're going to send me curveballs, then it sometimes takes me a while before I get a hit on them. Alright, so there you can see, just by magic, because I am Paul Daniels, it's for now fixed. It's not a great fix, but it's a fix nonetheless. It's not fixed. It's just pretending that it's fixed. There's going to be a fault with it somewhere. If nothing else, C9560 has to be replaced. Yeah, Mike, I bought it um, off eBay so that um, I need the main board. And I was hoping that it would be C9560, if nothing else. Maybe a little bit of corrosion here and there. But it seems we at least have a mediumly good start. By the way, can anyone tell me if this is running at 60 frames per second? I have a feeling this is not 60 frames. 
It's hard to say. It, it looks a little crisp faster. Certainly I know this one is 60. It's definitely got that I am 60 frames per second look. But I don't know if it's getting to YouTube like that. Uh, I'll take this apart and see what lies lie beneath. It says 1080 60. Okay. Yeah, as far as I know though, this camera here is actually a 50 frames per second camera. So I don't know how that goes. I don't know whether they just... Yeah, that would actually be a very frustrating, from a mathematical point of view, thing to try and deal with. Like having a 50 frames per second source and trying to resynchronize it to 60, it's like yuck. That's nasty ass. Where's my T6? I've got TX4. Excellent tweezers that are shonky that I'll one day lose and cry about. Yeah, it's tricky because that camera is 60. The microscope should be 60, although it's a lie. As far as I can tell from the specifications, it is actually a, uh, a 30, and they just simply run the frame twice, or maybe they inter, maybe they interpolate it. But I, I'm fairly sure it's not a genuine 60. Man. Right, well, we have a small technical issue here. We can't find my T6. So we're going to have to bodge around with the T5, which is not great. But it will work. It just means you're going to round off the splines a little bit. I suppose the real question is with the 60 frames per second is does it look like it actually is crisper or superior to the 30 frames per second as opposed to well we're getting 60 frames per second but it's really just a whole bunch of 30s being sent to us at the rate of 60. Mike Sims, I need to find a wireless cam for general monitoring that does 120. Well, yeah. That would be difficult with wireless. It's hard enough getting good, genuinely good, high definition, 1080, wired security cams. Yeah, a lot of them like to say, oh, we're 5 megapixels or we're, you know, whatever, some ridiculous megapixel level. But when you look at the actual frames individually, it's just a great big smoosh fest of blurry pixels. So fine, you're sending me 5 megapixels or whatever, 2K. But there's no distinction between them. Okay. Often at this age, they're just plastic stuck down. So I'm pretty sure this is plastic stuck. AVC1 cranked up to 11 here. The hands look so popular. Oh, cool. Okay, great. The microscope is... Um, oh, yeah, that was the plastic. My microscope is just 30 frames per second, 1080. But we'll have a look in a moment. Like I said, I don't think it is true 1080, 60. Okay, they've had this repaired at some time. That doesn't look like an original cable. Hey Vivek. Right, this is some kind of refurb board. I've seen these stickers around before. It has not had a C9560 replacement, which is good. So that means that there is actually hope for me to do it. Yeah, Mike, that's what I'm thinking. The drag 
is uh, the giveaway. But I don't know whether that's due to the 50 to 60 upscale algorithm or something else. And I just found my T6. That's hilarious. How very normal. So I don't think we have a true 60 setup here. It's sort of like a, well, we're trying hard 60. Try hard 60. And look, to be honest, it's really only generating around about 38 frames per second. So I think maybe my CPU can't keep up. I'm not sure. Wouldn't surprise me. It is only an i5 8400. All right, we're going to get a microscope now. Have a looky-loo. Yeah, maybe I'll just brush this off first. Defama did do a recording and it did show up 60, but like I said, I know the overhead 4K camera exports 50. I couldn't find a way to make it do 60. Maybe there is, I'm not sure. I haven't checked fully enough. Well, uh, Mike, in this case, if I can get this main board to work reliably, then I'll pretty much make about $20 and that's it. Because this is a long dragged out job that shouldn't have taken this long. And yeah, it's, it's basically just been a disaster. It... The original job came in simply most likely to have that replaced, but then it went all downhill from there. The PCH died. Yeah, it just really was a yeah, it really was a dud job. Now I could buy them from China, but I had my fears, and the costs were still pretty high. <laughs> Pardon me. So what I'm mostly looking for here is to see if there is any other damage that needs repairing or whether we are strictly 9560 type job so far it's looking pretty good the I noticed with the microscope when I'm looking at the screen it really is 30 frames per second this is not a 60 camera it's reporting 60 on the HDMI capture but you can tell when I'm painting it that the updates are pretty much only at 30. Getting some serious jumping. What do you mean by jumping? I mean, like I said, normally... It might be experiencing jumping simply because of the fact that it's been more direct. <laughs> to your eyeballs rather than slurring it between the 30 frames per second. Clean Sullivan, no motion, yeah, okay. Yep. Lots of experimenting to be done still. Well, I've got no drop frames. I'm just going to pull out some stats. Stats. What have we got? All right, yeah. Okay. The CPU is definitely not keeping up. I have about 7 to 8 percent drop frames because it can't render them fast enough. So that's our problem. AMC RAMs. Yeah, okay, so we, we've got a rendering problem simply because the CPU is weak. A 
the coloration looks good off the camera. In fact, it looks a little more colored than real life. So the saturation's up a bit. There's a slight amount of corrosion going on there. I would say it's quite hard for the CPU to keep up to something like a circuit board being moved along. And of course with the, uh, let's see, I've set the sharpness to pretty much maximum for the microscope camera. Yeah. If I turn the sharpness down, you'd probably find the CPU doesn't get destroyed so much. Okay, well, I'm going to do a 9560 replacement and we'll take it from there. black and white intel did they really do did they really have interlaced black and white I thought the interlacing more came about when we got to color I, I'm likely wrong but I was just kind of curious and that jump you saw when I turn on the extractor is normal Normal in the sense of it happens every time, not normal in the sense of you should expect it. <laughs> because I'm being an idiot here. I'm using my very expensive micro pencil when I should be using... Yeah, actually, I think I will actually change over the proper tip for this. <laughs> I don't care to spend another 90 bucks on a micro pencil simply because I wanted to save five seconds on a soldering job. Uh, Christian, uh, depends what you call private, because I don't have any problem buying from them. There you go, I suppose I am technically a business, apparently. Need a C9560, which is one of these. Boom. That is actually a reused one. I took it off a job that I yeah, didn't need it. They're surprising. They're, they're not super expensive, but they are still worth recapturing these things. Yes, profit is always the goal. This is going to still require a little bit of assistive heat. Just to get it down onto that. There we go. And you can't see that.
I think at least overall you can definitely tell the quality of the capture from the microscope is superior. But unfortunately the performance of the CPU is not so much. Yeah, um, we're just gonna. I'm just gonna have to go back to thirty. Bit of a shame, but until I get a better machine, it's just gonna have to be thirty. So I might try, say, pick up an i7, eleven seven hundred or something like that. Something that I know will have plenty of overhead in terms of performance to cope with what I need. Interestingly, does it seem to have the same rendering issue in this particular view, or is it just the microscope view? Hey, Elsa Moth. Now, there's a person I haven't seen for a little while. Or have I? Did I see you last week and said the same thing, or am I losing my mind again? Yeah, uh, I think definitely with the microscope it makes sense that it can't keep up because you've got all those different, yeah, there's so many parts of each frame that are different whereas on this you've got, aside from around here, everything's static. So. Yes, Element 14 and Farnell and Newark are basically all the same group as far as I understand. Oh, House Moth, yeah, I've got to work on that. Last night I was improving the software. This is why it's an alpha quality state, by the way. And I caused an avalanche of issues. There was one little issue with the scroll bar of uh, the scrolling of the list and it was driving me insane and it wasn't even an issue that anyone would really encounter on a regular basis but it was there and it was driving me mad and so I upgraded um, upgraded one of my libraries and that caused everything else to have a complete and utter meltdown and so that was the end of that so now I've got a very angry software system that doesn't want to do anything right for me and so this weekend I suspect I will be learning all about all the new things that have had to happen in order for me to just fix up that one itty bitty f bug that was annoying me and it wasn't even it was a usability bug it wasn't really a crashing floor or anything like that it was just a usability bug but the fact is, it was annoying me when I was trying to do things, which meant that it definitely took high priority. If it doesn't annoy me, then I don't care how annoying it may be to you, it's not going to get priority. I will for, for, forewarn, yes, forewarn people that once this goes into a full production release, the software, the price will be going up because it is a substantially larger project and I have to maintain the server side of things more now. But if you get your licenses now at the current price, then you will be able to migrate to the new release when it comes out without charge. You know, if you, if, if you bought it in the last two years or so which obviously if you buy it now will be the case. So just for a fair warning you, the price will go up, but you can jump in now before it does. Now 
Now, I know there's going to be the usual array of people going, it's too expensive, we can't afford that. And it's like, if you, you should be able to make that amount of money on the very first repair you do with that. It really, it's like, I suppose it's a matter of perspective. And the nice thing is it's a perpetual ownership So like Once you've got that license, you'll always have that license. It doesn't matter when the new versions come out, you'll still have your license and you'll still get to use it. It's not like I'm going to expire it through some back door. Unless you're a pirate and I managed to get lucky enough to catch you being dumb. In which case, yes, then I will cancel your license. But if you've been good, you'll be fine. Yeah, I don't really tend to listen to... I mean, there was plenty of whiners when I jumped it up to 139. Okay, what are we doing now? I better check that charges the battery now that I think about it. So I'll just go grab a new battery, make sure it's okay. So this is the old one. I suspect it is legitimately old. Okay, that is not a match. Okay, hopefully this one is. Been three years already, House of Moth. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't believe it myself when I was doing some checks. I honestly thought I only released the software originally about two, you know, two and a half, maybe three years ago. And the mass feels a little bit lower than I would expect. I don't know who decided this was a good way of doing the battery cables on these ones, but it really sucks. Sorry, I sound like a obnoxious teenager when I say things like that. But really, it sucks. So, not a good design. I guess that's why they changed it. Hey Walter, how you going, hospital-wise? Let me see. You're getting there. Well, I will agree that these are somewhat more approachable or more doable so far as repairs go, compared to the USB-C ones. The USB-C ones, yeah, there's just so much complexity involved with the USB-C interface, and particularly in the way that Apple has done it, whereby all of the ports have to talk to it. Yeah, it's an extra layer of frustration. All right, let's see how we go. Hopefully this thing charges. Uh, Actually, maybe I can find a bottom plate. Or maybe I can just rest it. Yeah. It's going to rest it like this. I don't think there's anything critical. It's going to be touching down there. I hope. <laughs> See if we can go a bit wider on the view. Oh, look at that. Legs that are very unsun kissed. Oh, 
Mike, that's bad about your um, mother with COVID. There's a weird bit of like pressure marking around here. You can just see it in there. Uh, well, so it doesn't matter whether you've been there plenty of times. I think it's still unsettling either way each time. Check if the top panel is slightly bent, you mean... Yeah. Well, it does have the... The glass does have breaks up here and down here. So that's possibly why. I guess the ultimate test here is, will this stay on? It stays on, dims, so that's good. Hey, user. So it's got a 1297, right? 17 incher. Mint condition works to the upper logo, and that's it. Really? Any idea what's wrong with it? What year is it? Jeez, there's some bloody noisy cars around here. Okay, so the fans are fine. Fans are about 2000 RPM. Temperatures normal it probably is highly due for new thermal paste <laughs> Walter if you get one of the GPU bypass kits you should be able to fix that up alright so yeah, the 2.6 gigahertz i7 2010. It's great. It's working. Very happy about this. Oh, 2009. Uh, 2009. That could be. That could be a C9560 as well, or something like that. I'm pretty sure 2009 has the cap failure problem. Camera section works. Speaker works. Yeah, C triple seven one. That's the one. Thank you, House of Moth. I was trying to remember which the, what cap number it was, but yeah, triple seven one. As far as I know, they run the same main boards as the 15 inch, don't they? Alright, we are absolutely burning up the trail here at 14 frames per second. <laughs> it's oh, 20 now. It's kind of scary to think that a modern, when I say modern, yeah, the, a recent release MacBook Air A1466, like one of the 2015 or onward type ones, they will do 30 to 40 frames per second. And that's just with the internal Intel GPU. This thing here has the NVIDIA chip and it's only just managing to like hold 19, 20 frames per second. Makes you realize how fast things actually have become. Which is why I don't really bother to get a graphics card these days. I just use the internal units. Because they are quite quick, so long as you're not doing serious gaming. Uh, let's see, yeah, this is using the GT330, so that's good. Well, I got lucky this time. I really got lucky this time. This is working great, so I'm finally, and I think it's been six months or more, am able to... And fingers crossed it actually holds with the transfer. Put this 
into their machine and give them a working system. And the nice thing is I've now got a test chassis for this particular uh, unit. Hey Roger Dodger. Pop superposition on there. Oh, I don't think I want to. I want to not have a molten mess on the bench here. Okay. So I'm happy enough with that. I'm going to run Memtest 86 now. Mostly because I want to see if there isn't an issue with the RAM sticks. Or, sh or rather, not so much the RAM sticks, the sockets. Spot the pattern. Yeah, oh, okay, House Moth. I, I won't be able to give you anything other than delicious exposure. <laughs> and in your situation, there's probably not a lot of exposure to give you. Where the heck's my mem test? But yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. So 90 bucks didn't get wasted this time. And in fairness, the even though it's got a clack a clacked, <laughs> someone needs more coffee. That would be me. Uh, even though it has a cracked glass on this, it's not too hard to replace the glass on these screens. It's a bit like um, what do you call it? A bit like an iPad sort of situation. Easier than an iPad, in fact. Alright, uh, that's done, that's done, that's done. So, Mr. Daniels is actually quite happy this time around. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, what have I got here? Just looking at weird stuff. I did also get something else today in the mail. Actually, I got a few things in the mail today. There we go, this is Paul's own mail bag get to show off my own stuff we'll put this aside all right so i bought three of these things and these are foot switches and the nice thing is the metal body now the only downside that i've already found is that while they do they are micro switch connected so you know it is good quality it's very solid but in terms of tactile feedback it's very lame because well if you know what micro switches are or if you're used to micro switches you'll know that when you handle them directly you can feel that little tick click but when it's in a big stomping foot switch like this <laughs> you're not going to feel that which is why generally i like those foot switches the really big solid ones that you see musicians use uh, with the great big oversized plunge top anyway so yeah this is come on there we go so you can see it has got the micro switch and there is a very faint tactile response there <laughs> you're never going to feel that through your foot this is clearly made for something like 240 volts or whatever, but we're only just going to be using it for just a simple DC on off. And I've got three of them, so I'm going to arrange them onto a board, rig them up to a OBS switcher panel. I, For those of you who have been watching me for a long time, you'll know that I made a circuit board that allowed me to do fast scene switching. It's like a, a keyboard. That's all it is. It's a USB keyboard. And so I'll take one of those, rig these up to it, all three of them, stick them onto a board. And also in the board, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a interference panel between them. People go, oh, what now? The idea is the problem I was finding when I was trying to punch in all the values really quickly is that I couldn't be sure that I wasn't pressing the wrong panel, uh, the wrong switch. So what I'm going to do, oh, we can pretend we've got three here. Make sure I don't lose those bits, they're probably much needed. I'm going to just stick something, maybe not this big, between the pedals like this. So when if your foot drifts a little bit, yeah, you'll immediately know. So you have to take a very deliberate step or shift to know you're going to the other pedal. 
So just small things like that that make all the difference in terms of being able to very quickly get the data put in. And the other thing I want to add is a lockout time with the switch. Now, micro switches are very good. They generally don't suffer too much to bouncing. But what I'm going to do is in the software, I'm going to make it say wait like 500 milliseconds or something like that before it considers looking at another input so maybe a second because I you think about it you need about at least a second to lift your foot move the probe to the next point put it down get the diode reading stable before you hit it again so yeah something like that some sort of lockout window to stop me accidentally say still having my foot a little bit too heavy on there and it misreads picks up the wrong reading things like that so a couple of little tweaks like that to turn this into a genuinely quick useful solution for getting data into these machines. The only thing I am finding is that the tension's a little bit much with this spring so I could cut the spring down or find a smaller spring but maybe I just need to actually exercise more and have a stronger foot. But they are well made. They were fairly cheap. They're only about, I think, 29 bucks a piece. Ah, Mr. Lemon's here. A copy paper or a new screen? New screen? Oh, yeah, that's right, because I do want a reference screen. That's the other thing I found with this new capture card. I went and watched the videos, and I realized how terrible my color settings and brightnesses and all that are. But what's a problem is that I have three screens here. And they, each one of them gives me different indication of what it really looks like. So I need to consider a reference screen or I need to bring in my MacBook, my Retina MacBook, so that I'll be able to tell what I'm really looking at. What card am I using? I'm using the AJA or AYA or AJA uh, Comey HDMI 4. So it's a four port HDMI. It will capture either four HD sources or you can chunk it to make a single 4K source. What about swapping out the switch to something like a 12mm moment? I won't really be able to... I mean, I suppose you could bodge it. You could go the way of um, Siren and use a whole lot of um, hot glue. But... I'll try these to start with. Maybe I won't need the tactile so much once I'm used to it. But yeah, I mean, I probably could put a really chunky tactile in there, like a push button switch that makes a very distinct click click type noise. We'll see. We'll get it running first and we'll see. The other nice thing is that the height for these pedals that I have to lift my toe is much lower compared to the one I've got at the moment. Oh, and the other thing is that. Um, the other one, the cheap ones that I'm using at the moment, the pivot point is at the front, so you actually have to get your foot on and rock it down like a sewing machine uh, treadle, whereas this one you can just use your toe and do that. So there's a lot of things that make this a much better option, even without it being tactile straight from the start. All right. Next thing I want to try, is this, is this a donor? Yeah, it's a donor. Would you not capture through USB 3? I... No, USB on Linux is generally a nightmare. Being able to go straight to the PCIe is vastly more to my preference. Uh, we're going to try some lead-free solder now. I know, I know everybody is just like abandoned ship, he's lost all his sense, but I've been wanting to try SAC305 lead free for a while and I finally had the opportunity to get some at a decent price and now I want to try it. I'm trying to find a victim that I can try it on. Just try around the SMC area. It's the ultra lightweight SMC.
Oh, crap that gets picked up on my workbench, honestly. By the way, someone did ask just before, do I work from home? The answer is no, I sleep at work. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I work at home. It's a home office. But given that I probably spend more time working, then effectively I'm sleeping at work. Uh, I've got the wrong soldering iron, but oh well. Let's see how this goes. So this is uh, basic 0.4 millimeter SAC 305. You can see it's got a very high gloss to it. Well, dude, get out of here. Get away. Get away. There's about to be some fire and activity. It does definitely have a higher gloss, in fact, than leaded in many ways. And this ant is a suicide ant. Hey, Yunyamara, welcome. You can certainly feel that it's not as low temperature as leaded solder. It has a bit more of a stickiness about it. But I've got to say, looking at the way it fillets, it has a tendency by the looks of it to be a little bit on the puffy side, um, you know, ballooning outside rather. It's probably because I've got too much in there though. Let's see how it goes as I draw it off. And you can certainly feel that it is not leaded solder, but at the oh yeah, it actually no, I feel it's pretty good there. Yeah, the lower viscosity, probably because it uh, doesn't, yeah, higher temperature requirement. No, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, SAC is tin, silver, and copper. So there's nothing too fancy in there. You know, there's no bismuth or acnotine or whatever, I don't know. Fancy name stuff. It is, you can feel the strand is definitely more rigid than leaded solder. So like, this is the leaded. And this is the lead free SAC. They're both pretty much the same. This is my 15 thou Kester. It's, uh, what is it, 6337. And yeah, this is the SAC 305. So definitely the SAC 305 has a higher gloss to it. Not that it matters, but just the things you notice. I'm gonna give it a go. I know, yeah, there's no problem with leaded solder. I've still got heaps and heaps of leaded solder. Probably, you know, the roll will probably last me another decade at least. But I did also, you know, want to try changing over to lead free just to see how things go. And I think it's worth a shot. And from what I've seen, the SAC 305 type solder does seem to be a popular one for transitioning over. Now, if I'm trying to remove connectors or other parts like that, and I do want to pickle the solder to give it a lower temperature, then yeah, I mean, I'm going to bring out the leaded solder and yeah, get that temperature down so I can get the parts off easier. What's it like wicking? Good question. Yeah, let's, um, let's see if we can make a puddle somewhere. Okay, Lemon. You have a good weekend too, sir. Why were they refusing to sell you the solder? Death pump. i got to wait for the iron to heat up. Come on. I forget that with a bigger tip that takes longer. Let's see how it goes with the sort of... 
It does a pretty good job on the QFNs. Yeah, the U8900, I think, yeah, you could still do that lead-free. Uh, lead the problem really with U8900 is that maybe the stencil was sized wrong in terms of the, I don't know, they did something wrong with it and there's probably just not enough solder because a lot of the manufacturers have this balance, understandably, between not using too much versus using too much. If you use too much, that's a loss of money because you've wasted solder. If you don't use enough, it's a problem because your parts will come off. They wouldn't say you slid it unless you were a business, seriously. Well, that should be okay now though, right? Um, and also, this seems to work fine with the NC559. Well, that wicks up pretty nice. I'll try to see how it is with hot air wicking. Sonia, I don't... Other than just the normal 6337, I don't use any special low temperature solder. Oh, you got a video on it. Okay. Let's see how it goes. I think half the problem with lead-free solders, there are so many different options available. And a lot of them are a bit on the exotic side or have very poor qualities out, you know, for general purpose. Certainly it takes longer to bring up this big lump. Probably would have helped if I had flux on there. It seems to skin up a little bit much. Let's just throw some flux on there. I wasn't helping it by not having flux. Yeah, it seems to develop a bit of a dross layer on it very quickly but if I'm reasonable and I have flux then it seems to be okay Rossman and a half of flux <laughs> just find a chip to put back on there see if I can test that sort of behavior what have we got here? This is a random chip I pulled off somewhere. What are you? Ninth, oh no, no, this board does not have one of those. Yeah, we'll try this one. The CD32 something. So what we're going to do is we'll take it off, redo the surface with the SAC and put it back down and see how it goes. Oh, don't worry, Kristen, this is a donor board. I gotta wait for it to heat up. That is definitely a problem. 
with leaded solder you can sort of get away with being impatient but with the lead free it looks like patience is key and I definitely have too much solder on that I'm just going to squeeze it out I guess and I have no idea which one's pin one and I'm not going to care I'll do it like this Just clean up that excess. Alright Walter, take care, thanks for dropping in. Wait for the heat. I wonder if it is SAC305 that Apple is using. It certainly does a perfectly good job of fillets. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm going to give this a go for a while, see how it works out for me. That one in the corner there didn't, the one in the middle rather, didn't really take properly. I think I'd need some assistive heat because it is a, I think pretty sure it's a ground plane pin. But yeah, that, that's pretty good. So I've got, I've got a 250 gram spool of it. So what is that, about a one pound spool? And see how I feel by the end of it. Alright, well that's it for this afternoon. Maybe something tonight. I do have some other repairs I've got to get done, but I probably also want to get some coding done because it's five o'clock, time to knock off work if I was a normal person. But I've got to say I am very happy about having found that i7 board. That was pure luck. It is not something I would... <laughs> think that I'm going to be able to replicate again on eBay. I mean, I haven't really used eBay to buy machines for a while. But um, that's great that we've got that. Hopefully the person who it's going to be for, hopefully they will not be too upset the fact that I've kind of chopped and changed on them a few times now because I said, well, I was just going to fit the i5 board and send it to them, but then I saw this one come up and I thought, you know, I might just wait that little bit extra and fingers crossed it works and we may have actually gotten lucky. So, Okay, I am out of here. You all take care. Thank you very much for being here. Like and subscribe. I've got to say that because YouTube says I have to subscribe. Um, no, you have to subscribe. And I think I will switch back to the 30 frames per second because we are dropping too many frames and we'll just simply have to wait until I get a machine that has a bit more of a CPU power uh, like I said, an i7 from 8th generation onwards was likely to be more than ample for this. It seems to be okay for the desktop 60 frames per second view, but certainly when it gets into the microscope, it's choking. So, can't win them all. We've done so well so far though, and I am really am liking this capture card. So, And I'm very happy that I managed to get it basically at half price. So it was definitely a bargain. Okay, out of here. You'll take care. I'll see you next time.